So in this video, I'm going to show you another example patch from the Gimlet uh, package for Max. Uh, you can download this package from GitHub. The link is in the description. And to open this window, you go to Extras, Gimlet Examples. So the patch I'm going to show you today is the one here, uh, Temporal Analysis, which uses PostNet to capture body movement from a camera and an algorithm called the Gesture Variation Follower to like follow gestures and map those gestures to three granular synthesizers. So I push the button to open the patch and the patch has three tabs. In the first tab, there's like an interface with uh, PostNet and I used uh, a PostNet implementation that is in the uh, Note for Max examples. I'll add a link to that too. There are like lots of interesting examples if you're interested in Note for Max. And the gesture following algorithm uh, that we use is called the Gesture Variation Follower. And it's an algorithm by Baptiste Caramieux. And I'll also link to a paper in case you're interested in knowing more about how the algorithm works. And here in the third tab, there are um, three granular synthesizers, each one with a different uh, sample, which we can actually also listen to by pressing the play sound button. So this is like an electric piano. And this one's more like a cello. And down here there's a bass. And I've actually used the pitch knobs here to, to increase the pitch of the cello, which once it's played through the grain synth, it will sound like this. Start PostNet. If you haven't used PostNet inside Max using Note for Max before, you have to install it. And this is what this bang is for. And it might take a while because I think it's like 500 megabytes uh, to download, but you'll get a completed message here in this message box once the installation is completed. To start PostNet, instead of use this toggle and an electron window opens like that. So as you can see, it'll track skeletons and send the data to Max, the OSC here. So here what I've done is to use some audit and modusk objects and abstractions to basically get the position of the left wrist into this port this network port, which will send this data to um, to the gesture variation follower module. Okay, so to know more about Audit and Modusk, I'll add some links to those libraries as well in the description. But uh, for now, let's see how we can use the freeze position data with the gesture following. So first of all, we need like to calibrate this basically to like rescale the data between zero and one so we can use it in here. So the only thing we've got to do is to push the calibration toggle, do a few movements to kind of give an idea of the range and then push back and then you'll see that those two sliders there follow the position of my wrist right so now to train um, to train the just variation follower let's do a little bit of window organization here so we can see everything also add a uh, new view so we can see the third tab at the same time okay so the thing with the gesture variation follower is that you have to tell, yeah, first of all, to clear the model, and then you have to tell it um, 
when a gesture starts and when it ends and to do so I'm gonna use like a remote um, to do that there's like you can choose which remote control to use here like I'm using a presenter remote it's one of those Bluetooth remotes that you use for like keynote and PowerPoint presentations you can also send it a MIDI note if you prefer or use the touch OSC layout it is included in the package let's start and record the first gesture which is going to be like a circle like so and the second one is going to be a, an X and the third one is going to be like an horizontal line for example all right so first gesture so first gesture start and stop second gesture the X start and stop and the third gesture the horizontal line start and stop so I switch to following first gesture second gesture third gesture second second gesture first you hear that sometimes the model gets confused actually there you go second and third So now we can have a look at how the patch is structured. As I said earlier, all the communication between the three tabs happens through network ports and OSC data. So here, OSC data coming from PostNet is sent to port 1001, which is the input port here of the gesture variation follower module, which in turn sends um, gesture following information to this output ports so 2001 is sent to the port 2001 which correspond to the input port of this uh, first granular synthesizer then 2002 to 2002 and 2003 to 2003 here okay this XY pad here is useful for uh, trying things out you can switch off the port that gets the data from PostNet and switch on the XY pad for like trying things um, without using PostNet. To do so, the procedure is exactly the same as before. Now I can record some gesture using the XY pad. I still use the remote for uh, switching on and off this toggle. So first gesture, a circle. Second gesture, an X. And third gesture, a horizontal line back and forth. Okay, now I switch to following and perform the first gesture. The second one. And the third one. And as you can see, sometimes uh, the model gets also a little bit of the gesture, like you can see here from this uh, uh, multi-slider here, the likelihood, so how close you are to each one of the three gestures that you have recorded and um, these other parameters here tells you also other interesting things like how fast you're performing the gesture compared to like the the gesture that you've recorded the scalings mean um, like how much bigger or smaller the gesture that you're performing is compared to the one that you've recorded and, then, and that is being tracked. The alignment is how uh, far in you are in the gesture that you're performed compared to the one that you recorded and this is actually also what makes the, the cursor here and the granular synthesizer move. So once again if I perform the first gesture you see that this moves together with the alignment. And also, um, there are like some small changes to the other parameters that correspond to speed and scalings. And actually, you can have a look at the, the guts of the this module by unlocking the patch. 
and opening a new view of the module and switch to edit, unlock and turn off presentation. Okay. And so here you can see, you can learn a bit more about how everything is structured. There are like some useful comments that tell you, you know, what these parameters do, what each one of the output uh, parameters of the GVF mean and also like this side of the patch there's like an abstraction that basically uh, tells you how each of the output parameters of the gesture following module are mapped then to like each one of the parameters of the granular synthesizer and there's of course one for for each port okay so let's have a quick look also at the um, granular synthesis modules you can use this button to load your own samples there are a few in the package like the electric piano a symbol also that is like a bit more noisy <laughs> which unprocess sounds like this. Okay. Another important thing to notice is like these buttons switch on and off the, like basically uh, the control, the communication between the machine learning module and this particular knob. So now the, this one where the ML toggle is on, these knobs are controlled by the gestural temporal analysis module before, like that is that we trained before with the uh, with the gestures. Okay, so you know we can adjust the sound and also the pitch here. For example, now it's like I increased it a little bit. You can randomize it, for example, like. So each grain has a slightly different pitch. And here on the bass, let's see what it sounds like. It's kind of nice like this, you can get it even lower. Or higher. So here, if we go back to our gesture following, we can see what it sounds like. And things like that so you can keep on experimenting and changing like parameters and train new gestures and see what it sounds like and so on and so forth and uh, yeah like 